Hello, welcome to another edition of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to have a look at loops within ARM Templates. Loops are a feature that allow you to deploy more than one resource at the same time. So if you want to deploy, let's say, five virtual machines, rather than having to define five different resources for that, we can create one resource and we can copy it five times. This has the added benefit of being able to deploy these resources in parallel if you want to. So using a loop within your ARM template can help you deploy a large amount of resources at the same time with the same sort of configuration. ARM templates only have one sort of loop, and this is the copy loop. It's a property of the resource, and you can see here it's a copy object, and within that object you pass in a few things. Pass in a name for your loop, a count, so the number of times you want to loop through this resource, and then you have a couple of optional properties, the first being mode, so whether this is a serial or parallel deployment. The default is parallel, so all of your resources will be deployed at the same time, but if you need those to happen in serial, you can, you can change this value and have them be done one at a time. You also have a batch size option, so if you choose the serial mode, then you can determine the batch size. So it doesn't have to be one at a time, but you could do it two at a time or four at a time or so on using this batch size property. The only ones you have to use are the name for the copy and the count. The count needs to be a zero or positive number. It can't be negative. Um, the option to use zero is a fairly recent one, so you need a fairly up-to-date version of the PowerShell command list to use that, but you can use zero, which means you won't get anything deployed. So let's go and take a look at that in use. So here in VS Code, we've got our storage account ARM template that we built in a previous episode. We've added a couple of things so that we can create multiple storage accounts. The first thing is that we've created a parameter called storage account count, which is just allows us to pass in an integer to determine how many storage accounts we want to create. We've added a default value of one, so that if it's not passed in, we still get one. But if we pass in two or three, then it will create two or three storage accounts. Then if we look at the actual storage account object, we've added a copy property. And we're just putting in two values here, the name, which we're calling storage copy. You can call it whatever you like, but it's just so you can reference it later. And then the count we're passing in, our parameter for the storage account count. Now at the minute, if we run that, it will fail when it gets to the second storage account because it's going to try and create two storage accounts with the same name. So if we look in the name section, we're using that unique string function, but we're passing in the resource group ID. So it's generating a unique string for each resource group. These storage accounts are going to be in the same resource group. They'll get the same unique string. And so the name will be the same. So often if you're doing a loop, you're going to want to reference the number of the loop you're in as part of the name. So you can create a storage account with 0 and 1 in the name or 0 2 in the name and so on. And for that, there's a special function called copy index. So in our name, we can just add to the concatenation to add in copy index as part of the name. And now this will add a 0, 1, 2, whatever the loop we're on to the particular resource it creates in that loop. So now we've added that, this is ready to go and it will run and it will work fine and it will create multiple storage accounts for us. Now that's the simplest kind of loop. You're just giving it a number and it loops through that many times. But often you want to do something a bit more complicated. So quite a common approach is instead of passing in the number of resources you want, you actually want to pass in an array of resources. So let's say an array of resource names. So you don't want to pass in an exact number. You want the template to work out that number based on how many items are in an array. And that's very easy to do. So if we look at this second template we've got here, it's the same storage account, but instead of passing in a number, we're passing in an array of storage account names that we want to get created. So we need to adapt our storage account object to deal with this. So instead of having this parameter, which is a integer, we've got an array, but we can't just pass an array into the account field, that won't work. So we need to use another function, the length function. The length gives us back the length of the array. And so this will give us back an integer to determine how many times we need to loop based on the size of the array. So if we add that in here, we place our count with length and then the parameter of name of the array. So that will now loop the correct amount of times. But obviously, as we're passing in an array of names, we want to use those names for the storage account name. So we want to get rid of this first part where we're passing in a name as a string and get rid of the copy index because we're not going to use that number now. We're going to keep the unique string because we still want to add a unique string to the end of the name to make sure it's globally unique. But here, 
what we can do, we can use the copy index to look up an item in an array using the number of the copy index as the position in the array. So all we do is we again use the parameter syntax, so parameters and the name of the array, and then we use the square bracket syntax that you're probably familiar with from any array language, um, and we pass in the copy index there. And that will go and fetch the right value from the array based on where it is in the loop. And so you can use this for a simple array like this, but potentially you could also have um, an array of complex objects. So instead of just storing the name of the storage account, let's say we wanted to store a whole load of different properties. We want to store the name, um, the skew of the storage account, the region of the storage account, those sort of things. We could have that as a an object within an array. So we could then use this lookup syntax to go and look up the actual object based on the copy index number, and then we can grab the properties off that object for, it, for the particular parts of the storage account we want. We're going to now run this template. If we have a look at the parameters file, what I've done is I've added an array with three different names for the storage accounts I want to create. And we'll just run that from PowerShell. There's nothing special here about actually running the template. It's the usual commands we've run every time before to deploy an ARM template. We'll just go ahead and run that and wait for that to complete. And now if we head over to the Azure portal and have a look at that resource group, you can see we've got three storage accounts created with the names it's supplied in our array plus the unique string. And we can now go back and add more storage accounts to that array and it would go ahead and create them for us. Bear in mind if you remove items from the array, that can sometimes cause a bit of a problem. Firstly, because if you remove an item from the array and you don't use the complete deployment mode, so you use incremental, then that object isn't actually going to get deleted, it will just be left there and no longer be referenced by your template. But if you remove items from the middle of an array, what you can find obviously is that the copy index number will change. Now if you're just using the copy index number to reference the items in the array, that's fine, that won't make any difference. But if you're actually using that number in your naming at all, then that's going to change. And that could result in you creating a new storage account rather than updating the existing one. So something just to be careful of. If you're going to use an array of items, I would generally then avoid using the copy index number in any naming or anything like that. I would just use it as a lookup. Now we've talked so far about looping through resources as a whole, so we can create multiple storage accounts, virtual machines, so on. But there are also times where you want to loop through a property of a resource rather than the whole resource itself. So a very good example of this is with a virtual machine you might want to pass in a value that specifies the number of data disks attached to that virtual machine and loop through that to create those data disks dynamically based on that number. And so we can use the copy um, option for that as well. And this is slightly different to how we used it previously. So in the example here, we've got our virtual machine and we want to go and dynamically create the data disks based on that number. So we've got a parameter called number of data disks, which is an integer between 0 and 16, and we want to use that in our template. So we've got this copy object within the storage profile section. And in here we've got the name. Now the name of the copy object, unlike previously where you were just giving it a name so you could reference it, you could call it whatever you like. In here, the name actually needs to match the name of the property you want to loop through. So in our case, it's the data disks property we want to add multiples of. So the name has to match that. The count is the parameter we're passing in. And then we have a new section, which is the input section. We didn't use this previously because we didn't need it for, for doing resource loops. But for property loops, we have this input section, which allows us to provide the values for those properties within the property we're looping. So in this case, the data disk property requires that you provide the disk size, the LUN ID, and whether you are crediting it from an empty uh, disk or whether you want to use an image. And so we have to pass those in to the copy object because it's going to use that when it's doing its loop. Now here we are hard coding these. So the disk size and the create option are set for each disk. So every disk we create is going to get a one terabyte disk that's empty. The LUN ID is going to be generated from the copy index, however. But if we wanted to, we could also have made this number of data disks parameter an array or an array of objects which included this information. So we could vary the disk size depending on which point in the array was and so on. But we're keeping it simple here. 
by using this copy index, we can loop through those properties inside the, inside the object and just vary that. So we'll only get one virtual machine, but it might have three data disks or four data disks or whatever. So what that actually looks like if you were to look at the expanded JSON when it runs the deployment is you effectively get this array of data disks that has those three, four, or however many disks you decided to add in it. So this can be really useful if you're using a resource that has the option to have multiples of a particular property and you want to automate how many of those there are based on a parameter you're passing in. And that's how loops work. There's not a huge amount to them, but they are a really useful function that you're going to find yourself using often if you need to deploy resources in bulk, you need to do copies of resources, or you need to allow the ability for people to come in and configure a template through the parameters and have that determine how many of a resource or a particular property of a resource gets created. As always, the templates I've shown you today are in the GitHub repo, so if you want to have a look at how they work and run them yourself, feel free to go grab them. Next week, we're going to have a look at how we can do conditions and if within a template to allow you to make your templates more dynamic still. Hopefully, I'll see you then. Until next week, have a great rest of your day.